think we should have a couple more times. Yeah, no, we're getting it. Mahoney's up there too. Yeah, see, because there's three first commits. I really They're just deciding too much stuff with, without any opposition. Up in the baseball. They hand pick the committee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what Under the what? Know. We got a vote on it tonight, don't we? James has got a German Shepherd. <coughs> this one didn't cost as much as the last one. She said, "Oh, this one cost more." <laughs> but she paid twelve hundred dollars for this one. Oh my God. Yeah, it shouldn't be either. We, we should but, but the village is collecting. <laughs> so, you know, he, mar he married. I know, but there's. Been talking, the works, the, that should be, the rules should be changed that the printers don't count, too. Yeah. 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 They don't want to do that. Like I stress in the college, you know, they show it on my desk yeah. somewhere, but, yeah, but they don't live there because they put it out there. I think the village just keeps it going. The home residents, well, they live there part of the time and they're using services, but yeah. the printers don't use very many services, but you know, she didn't have to they do when they do the state, the state pays really for it, too. A few more cords here. <laughs> I hate to say it because you're a district, but I, I need it. I we're going to set it up. Put something up there for special yeah. work. Oh, that's too funny. I'm, I'm kind of excited that I hooked the damn thing up. Call this meeting of the Washera County Board of Supervisors order. We'll start with roll call. Mrs. Krentz. <coughs> Mr. Tim. Here. Mr. Piaski. Here. Mr. Weddy. Here. Mr. Downey. Here. Mr. Eckstein is excused. Mrs. Collada. Here. Mr. Weiss. Here. Mr. Likeness. Here. Mr. Crawford. Here. Mr. Kirshner. Here. We stand now for a silent prayer and then the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> At this time, we are here for public comments, and our first one is Pamela. Good evening. My name is Pam Guchow. I'm a correctional officer at the Washera County Jail, and I'm also president of the Correctional Officers and Dispatch Association. I wanted to talk to you about the staffing resolution that you'll be addressing tonight. I know very little about budgets, committees, and boards, but what I do know about is working in the jail every single day and why the resolution from the safety committee should pass at six per shift. First thing I want to talk to you about is assaults on officers. They happen all the time. I personally had a muscle pulled in my back during a struggle with one of the inmates. More recently, my partner and I were both spit on by an uh, inmate who didn't want to be at jail. Um, we've had inmates who um, have thrown liquid substances at our officers. Uh, we've had broken finger that was involved with a shoving match with one of the inmates. Um, we've had officers who've been kicked in not so fun places. We've been called every name in and out of the book and every combination you could probably think of. Um, the second thing I'd like to speak with you about is ratios. Um, as an example, I want to use our inmate population at 100. Um, with 100, if our staffing level is at minimum, it's three officers per shift. 
One of those three is assigned to master control and can't leave at any time for any reason. That would leave two officers to deal with the entire inmate population. That ratio would be 50 to one at any given time. With four officers working, again, one in master control, that would leave three to deal with the entire population. That's 33 to one. Five officers working, the ratio goes to 25 to one, and with six of us, it would be 20 to one. I always say that we, the officers, are in charge there, and that only works until the inmates decide that they're gonna be in charge, and then we're not in charge anymore. Should that day come, I want the best possible odds and the best possible ratio, inmate to officer ratio possible. All inmates are not created equal. <clears throat> you may think that an inmate is an inmate, but that's not true. We deal with county inmates, state inmates, male and female inmates, and Huber inmates, both male and female. And we have seen an increase in our mental health inmates. The Huber inmates demand more time from us than any other inmates on a daily basis. An officer must observe them as they change from their jail issued uniforms into their street clothes to go out to work and when they return as they change from their street clothes into their jail uniforms they also have to be observed. This is to ensure the safety and security of the facility. An officer also has to make time for each Huber, Huber inmate to do their laundry. We got one washer, one dryer. It takes time to get them all cycled through. We have to be, they have to be housed separately from other inmates. Their programs must be separate to ensure the safety and security of the jail. An officer must also do job site checks, go over all the Huber rules, and verify all their information. Issue random drug testing, keep time cards on each working inmate, verify driver's license, vehicle registrations, insurance on Hubers who either drive themselves or have other people pick them up and take them to and from their job sites. This doesn't even include the GPS program or Hubers wishing to transfer into our county or others wanting to go to other counties and serve their sentences. I hope that this information and helps to explain. Your three minutes are up. Okay, I got one sentence left, may I finish? I just hope that this information helps to explain the type of inmates that we are now working with and helps you understand the additional burden on the officer, officers, thereby demonstrating the need for the proposed staffing levels. Any questions, please feel free to ask and thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> the next person is Warren Brewer. Good evening. Hi, my name is Warren Brewer. I live in the town of Richford. And some of you are quite aware of the fact that for a long period of time, I have advocated about the size of the supervisory, uh, the number of supervisors on the county board. I felt after the referendum indicated that there was to be 11 members that that was way too small. I feel that the <coughs> county board membership should be 15 people. I think that this gives each supervisor an opportunity to work with a smaller number of constituents, being able therefore to understand their concerns, their ideas, and let them give input into actions that you might take in the future. I commend you folks for the yeoman duties and tasks that you have performed these past few years. I've sat in this room and heard the frustration of you trying to schedule committee meetings when you're all on so many committees already that the overlapping of time that you have to spend on these committee meetings and the number of them in a day uh, is overwhelming. I, I don't know how you do it. And I commend Norm for the fact that he juggles all these things up in the air and keeps track of all that stuff. I don't know how he does that either. But anyway, I really do recommend that there be at least 15 county supervisors, 15 areas, and that this would give all of the people in the county um, a closer connection with the supervisor of their area. Now, I don't know what the map's going to look like with 15 districts. I think we'll find out in the pretty soon this evening. But uh, also I think it gives the opportunity for these committees to have at least five supervisors on a committee. Some of your committees are only three people. That means if two people approve or disapprove of something you're doing, that's it, you know. And that I don't think is actually representative of what it should be in the, in the county. So again, I recommend 15. I guess I could live with 13, but uh, 
if you're not superstitious. But I still think it should be 15. So thank you for your attention, and good luck. Thanks, Warren. Okay, our next speaker, David Peterson, our sheriff. Well, I uh, apologize again for having to leave right away um, because Glenn Johnson and I have been working for the last two or three months to schedule a meeting with a group of people that we really have been trying to, to get into. Uh, and Glenn's gone on vacation this week, so Paul File and I are going to meet with them, and hopefully they'll wait for us. Um, I would just like to remind um, everybody here that uh, this is uh, National Law Enforcement Officers Week. Um, and we were fortunate enough at the end of April to have uh, an officer from Fond du Lac Police Department that survived the shooting uh, join us for a short period of time. And I think that um, really was um, good for the officers in, in my department uh, to, to see that. And um, it probably uh, drove home the need to be uh, cautious. And I don't know what is happening this spring, but uh, since... Um, the Friday before Mother's Day, I think we've had about 20 domestics, so, and those are always the ones that are, are the most uh, troublesome, I guess. We began our uh, first day of Spillman training today, and I would like to thank the uh, county board. It, it appears I did not attend the training, but everything I got back from the project team that, that trained today is that it is not only a quality product, but uh, that it's Windows-based and it's, it's gonna be very user-friendly. Um, and so they're excited about it. Uh, probably not as excited about having to go to two, days, two more days of school this week, but uh, um, we're, we're, we're getting started on that. And, and, I, and again, I thank, thank the county board for, for making that available to us. Uh, we, we have closed the work release center uh, a week ago Monday. Um, I was asked about policy that we're writing for the the closing and the security, and we're kind of writing that in pencil right now because um, just the other, this weekend, we had a couple of juveniles and we always did those over here. Fortunately, the officer that was uh, involved with that was one of, the, one of the four people that got a set of keys for the place so we could get in and, and still process that over here. So we, we do have some growing pains with, with how we still would like to be able to utilize a, a small portion of that over here because Quite frankly, we're not set up at the at the main jail to to uh, process juveniles, um, but we're working through that. We're also um, kind of thinking about um, our our chapter 51, that maybe we could do some of those over here, and and so we're we're kind of in a state of flux. Um, the security, I was glad to hear from the judge yesterday when I was up here um, as the security officer in his courtroom that that he said he thought it was going pretty smoothly. So I guess uh, we've got one person fooled because I think there was, it's been kind of chaotic on our end um, and trying to juggle everything and, and make sure that we're, we're doing what we're supposed to and, and getting used to uh, um, a new process, if you will. So I think that that is, is going well and we're moving forward. And, and we kind of uh, told a couple of the officers that are gonna spend the majority of the time over here that we're gonna kind of lean on them or or ask them to come up with different ideas and, and different uh, problems that they see that when they arise so that we can address them uh, long term. So thank you very much. <coughs> Thanks, Dave. That's the end of our speakers at this time. Uh, now we need a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Motion by Donna Claude, a second by <coughs> Mr. Prince. Any discussion on the agenda? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's been approved. Minutes of our prior meeting, how do you find? Mr. Chairman, I'll move to approve the mess presented. Everybody, second by Phil Downey. Any discussion on the minutes? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor of that say aye. Aye. Opposed? That's been approved. Old business we're gonna get into now is what we talked about last month. Consideration possible action on the following resolution. That resolution is for authorizing staff for the jail facility at, that is our main jail. <clears throat> okay, we need a motion to put it on the floor. Motion by Mr. Kirshner, second by Larry Crawford. Now we have discussion on this. The resolution is in your packet. 
Hearing no discussion. Actually, I have one. Um, right now we have our jail administrator is half, and this says one jail administrator position. Now, is that still gonna be half-time jail administrator and half-time chief deputy? Is, is Okay, all right. So what I'm, I'm saying, you're not hiring a new jail administrator and then keeping George as chief deputy? Any more discussion, Joe? Yes, I had a question last last month. We talked about this, and that with this number here, there's going to be more staff than is needed for the jail. Okay, well that's why the sheriff is here to explain it. Uh, they explained it to our meeting, and we went along with it at this time. At the budget time of next year, it might change when we get the 2012 budget. But at this time, this is what the recommendation is. Uh, if the sheriff wants to relate to it, he can. Or, uh, but we even had the union sit in with us on it, and we went over thoroughly on everything that we needed. And this includes the uh, a part dispatch position, and also in there. Uh, <coughs> that was the only extra, wasn't it, Dave? Well, what we, what we did is the same. We went back.
projected cost what was the projected cost for for the for this resolution yeah. well um, yeah George I had the opportunity to sit with George and Darlene and go over this um, since last month the state is actually dropped their numbers by another five per day so we're down to we as of this point we were at 42 instead of the 47 um, and unfortunately we have no no idea if that's gonna go down or up I mean we just we just don't know so for budgeting purposes it's a little difficult um, if if it stayed at 42 and we and we approve this staffing level um, the department will be over budget by about three hundred thousand dollars no so, I, so this won't fit into current budget no. so you're not going to treat their budget like you do other budgets in the county do you live within your budget you decide how you're gonna live within it like you did last year with land conservation you I got rid of an employee now <laughs> we did it last year now so that's not gonna happen anymore no I I, I don't know why you're I, looking I'm at just, me well it's because that's <laughs> what you told us and you told us basically here's your budget you live within it okay. so now we're gonna change that move till the next time it comes up we can't keep doing this back and forth and I know we don't want to lose employees, but I, the I, wrong person. but I think we have to find out a way to live within that budget, whether they adjust something else, don't do something else, stop doing boat patrol, stop <coughs> doing something, and live within your budget. That's what everybody else has <coughs> to do. We <coughs> lost employees in different departments because of the budgets. So I don't know how we can just go and say, we're just going to give you $300,000, and that's fine. The next guy that comes along, oh, got to get rid of an employee. Is it fair? No, it's not fair. So I think we've got to look at just not just keep giving the money out. You told us we had to cut staff. And if it's all you down to staff, then he's going to have to cut staff for some 300000 That's the way I look at it. So. And, this, uh, and this question is for Sheriff Peterson. Uh, on this resolution, it states 16 corrections <coughs> officer positions. Now, how does that address uh, the uh, concerns that Pam had when she spoke earlier? Is this is it just is this addressing the six per shift? Is my question. The sixteen corrections officer positions. I understand that, but but I'm asking you. Is this, does this address her concern, is my question. On a good day, it addresses the concern. Where, where the good day is when all six are there, but the other the day is when there's two or three missing. Problem. Yeah. The problem, the problem, the problem that, that, that I have a reason for having this is having to get out of the state. If, if we, we have to shut up the bar, and, and our folks are in state, Thank you. Any other questions? No other questions? We're ready? Okay, all in favor of this roll, roll call vote? Okay, roll call vote. Mr. Leiker. Aye. Mr. Crawford. Aye. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Piastri. 
Oh. Hi. Hi. Mr. White. Hi. So it passed at one voting. Okay, we get into new business. And at this time, are you ready, Deb? I am. Okay. <coughs> Both to approve the tentative county supervisor district plan, and we're going to be showing what the maps look like at this time. Okay. We, uh, uh, Jan Schumacher and I met and Plan 1, Plan 2, Plan 3, and Plan 7, which the Executive Committee has not seen as of this time, all have 11 supervisors. Uh, Larry Tim, Supervisor Tim called me and asked me, um, and I'll just show you the little bit of difference here. This is Plan 2. Let me get that a little bigger. So you can see in Plan 2, we're uh, Bloomfield and Poissippi are north, it's a north-south, and Saxville and Leon are north-south. In Plan 7, it's east-west. So you have Bloomfield and Saxville together, you have Poissippi and Leon together. And that is the only change between Plan uh, 2 and Plan 7, and that is um, by the request of Supervisor Tim. So that is, that is 11. So what, how do you want me to do this? You want to go through each one? Are there, did you all have the opportunity to go out on the internet and look at these? Um, is there one in particular you want to talk about? Um, the, the 11s kept municipalities pretty much intact, as, you know, as much as we could. The, the larger the number, the more broken up um, the municipalities become. I know most of you had received a letter from a group saying um, that we should not count prison population. Right at this point in time, we have no choice. We have to count prison population um, in that, as population for that municipality. So um, anything in particular you want to look at? This plan is passed. When does it go into effect? For the next election. So when people take their papers out for the next election, it would be for that district. Not out of a job until later. Not today, Bill. No, <laughs> not today. <laughs> um, so plan six is the 15. Um, Mr. Brewer uh, was interested in the 15. Um, part of the problem with this is you have a lot more um, splits quite a few things are split up. Uh, Red Granite is, has some splits. Watoma has some splits where in, in the smaller numbers, we're able to keep those populations pretty much intact. So how they design their wards will be really up to them at that point in time. So here's a 15, gives you a good idea. There's you know, some odd little, you know, odd little, this is a little bit of Red Granite and, and it's part of Warren. Um, but there, that is 15. It's all doable. 15 is doable. Um, plan 5 is 13. So you can see that you don't have quite as many areas broken up. Um, but Watoma, Watoma split a little bit and Red Granite split a little bit. So, so basically we're telling them how, how to design their wards. And the smaller the number, you don't have to do that. So plan four is pretty clean. That's 12. So I don't know if that's something you're interested in or not. Um, we've had even numbers in the past. It works. We can do it. Um, so that's a 12. So basically, the executive committee had recommended plan two. And Supervisor Tim is asking that we just change this, this corner so that we have Bloomfield and Saxville together and Poissippi and Leon together. And there is that little, that little carve out there. So I will show you Plan 7 again. Otherwise, everything else is all the same. So I'll show you Plan 7 now. Uh -oh, one sec. See how it... 
it's it's east west now so and that's my current district i could see no reason to to switch it around uh, the populations are approximately the same either way the poissippi town board got a hold of me larry albright and he sent a uh, email to me and they like plan four the best and the next plan would be plan five for them okay had they seen had they looked at it after plan seven was put out no, there maybe not or it was I, I'm okay aware of that one so they liked four the best yes okay so That's plan the four. okay plan four is 12. So Poissippi and Aurora are together in that particular situation and that little bit of city of Berlin. So this is 12. This is 12 supervisory districts. The only thing that I really am not crazy about is this right here. This is kind of an odd little combination, but it's just how it worked out. Plan two, sure. One more time. <coughs> Plan two. And plan two and seven are identical with the exception of uh, over there change around. Oh, after you guys decide, then we send it um, to the municipalities and they have 60 days to draw their wards. So um, that it, it is a little time sensitive. Uh, they haven't given us a lot of time. We didn't get the um, information until after the February, I think it was in February sometime, we actually started getting the numbers from the Census Bureau. So they don't, they don't give us a lot of time to, I think actually it was March, it was after the March meeting that we got it. So, um, so basically what they're telling us is we have to decide soon so we can give it to the municipalities so they can draw their wards. And then it comes back to us and we adopt the official with all their ward information. So here's plan two. So this, of course. This is 11. This is 11 again. <coughs> so the only difference is this corner right here. Well, this is what it is right now, I believe, isn't it? It's this way right now? Okay. It was like our number two, our plan two. Right. And we see four again. So this is what, so this does satisfy um, Supervisor Tim's concern. This is 12 supervisors though <coughs> this, is, this is adding one more supervisory district and again I just this this is kind of an odd little about there was a concern about um, numbers of people on a certain committees uh, a couple of committees like uh, public works I think is the one or public safety one of the two anyway um, is it possible to have five on one of those committees that is not a quorum you know five is not a, a I mean a many I don't think it's it, not it, it's it not is a, it, five is a big concern because there's with 11 on the county board 
five supervisors can sway the rest of the county board. So it's, it's not over the limit, but it's so that there would be a lot of questions could be asked and so forth. That'd be too large, isn't that right, Ruth? Well, the problem becomes if you have to stand up and talk about it, you go to the board. Oh, okay. All right, okay, I understand that. I can understand where three would be more efficient on that. I guess I would prefer to see the uh, board left at the size that it is at this time. Um, Which one are you recommending? I would recommend um, number two. Okay. Is that in the form of a motion? I move to, um, to uh, approve number two or rep um, yeah, I guess uh, to recommend number two as being the uh, tentative supervis supervisor district plan. Do we have a second to that motion? Second. Second by Donna Clotta. Any discussion now on it? Yes, Larry. Why do you want number two? Why do you want to split my district? Well, I think, I don't know that any district staying the same, is it? Mine would be if you didn't, in, if you accepted seven, and there's no advantage to, to accepting seven over two that I can see. What is the disadvantage of uh, accepting two in your eyes? It would mean I would be representing a different uh, area in, almost entirely. Yeah. Well, I think, does that affect almost everybody there affecting, or uh, representing different people? It's on the east end of the county it does. Well. Let's see what the West End, well, and this, on two and seven, yes. But as, as of any of the other plans are all different from what they are now. Correct. Are Everyone has changed a little bit. Right. Bill? Town of Marion is <coughs> the most populous township and pays more taxes than anybody else. You're eliminating a, member, a uh, representative. No, actually, they'll have two. two. They'll have two representatives. No, they won't. They'll have uh, the town of Dakota and the town of Mount Morris. It takes full time. That's only a little part of their activity. I don't see why the, why the town of Marion wouldn't Marian, have a full time Marian representative. Is, Marion is split, and they have, they'll actually have two, the potential of two people representing Marion, where Mount Morris it's only has town. one, Dakota only has one. <laughs> It could end up there's two representatives uh, living in the town of Mount Marion. It could, you could have actually two people that live in Marion. One would re represent the district that includes Mount Morris, and one <coughs> could be in the district that includes Dakota. So the, their potential is there, they could have two people. There is no, there is no perfect, I mean nobody, <laughs> if you change one thing, it affects somebody else. There is no perfect way to do this. I, I wish there was, but there isn't. Okay, any more discussion on it? We got a motion and a second for number two. Hearing no more discussion. Discussion? I just don't see the, the advantage of, of changing my district around. It's up to the membership here of what they decide. That's But we have a motion and a second on the floor. That's what we have at this time. We have to either dispose of it, well, if put it down, or If they're going to change it, I think there has to be a good reason. Population is the same either way. Yes. Can I see seven again, sure. please? The 
Yeah, seven change years, weren't they? Yeah. The two did also. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you, Deb. Okay, what's your pleasure? You want to vote on this? Yeah. Okay. Okay, we got a motion to second. All in favor of Plan Two, say aye. 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 Who said aye? Raise your hand. Five and it's half and half, isn't it? Okay. vote on it. I'll say the no vote then. So. After the after the after looking it over, I like plan seven better than I do plan two with the uh, townships. So I'm going to vote no. So it's split. So it didn't, if it's a tie vote, it doesn't pass, does it? Okay. Now we need another motion for another district. Harry? I move we uh, adopt plan seven. We have a second for that. Second by Joe. Any discussion on that one? Hearing none, all in favor of plan seven, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. How many no's? Who knows? I said I. I'm just saying. Okay, that one is taken care of. Now we go to the town. Thank you. And villages. <coughs> <coughs> okay, at this time, our acceptance of emergency medical dispatch proposal and inclusion in the bond. Make a motion to approve. Okay, we got a motion by Joe to approve. Do we have a second that? Second by Mr. Likeness. Any discussion on it? Hearing none, all in favor of that say aye. Aye. Opposed? That's been approved. Can I just ask, what does that mean exactly? What you just, are we doing it or aren't we doing it? We're including the price in the bond, that's what. But are we, are we doing it? Are we actually going to implement it? Or are we just adding the money into the bond, period? And what was the intent of that motion? I would like to see okay. it. I'd like to see it implemented. Yeah. And, and it says, uh, yeah, acceptance, acceptance of emerg emergency medical dispatch proposal and inclusion in the board. So that or in the bond that w I think okay. was your motion, wasn't it? Yes. I want to know because it's going to be asked. Okay. Any more discussion on it? Is it? Do we need to put a time limit on it? Um, you know. I mean, I hate to see this pass and then three years from now say, well, we, we can't do this. So um, so do we want a time limit on it when it has to be implemented? Is it all right to put a limit in this? Is, is I, I don't know if we can. I, I can't answer that one. I can't answer that. I think you guys can do whatever you want to do. Well, can I amend my motion to include the end of the year? Okay, we got a motion and a second on the floor to include in the bond. All in favor of that motion say aye. 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 Opposed? That's been approved. Now, if you want a time limit on that. I guess I have one question is how long would it take to get it in, in, in place? Can you ask him that? Could it go within a year? Could it go within a year? And again, I'm going to go with Ann and you guys decide. I mean, it's, it's, there's three days of training for the actual dispatchers um, and simultaneously the administration can be trained as well. So we could probably have it up and running as quick as a month or two or whatever. Yeah, but we have to make sure we have the information. Of course. And but it would be. Would this be a winter project for the training? 
even after the first of the year and get it implemented within six months or something like that? I make the motion that we get this implemented and do the training in the winter and get it operational within the first six months of next year. Six months of next year. We got a second by Mr. Leitner. Any more discussion on it? Hearing not, all in favor of that say aye. 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 Opposed? That's been approved. Now, we have it in our packet, a motion to approve our debt management policy, which we have to have. And uh, you need a motion on that one. I'll move to approve the uh, debt management policy as it's <coughs> presented. We have a second. Second. By Donna Clotta. Any discussion on that? Hearing none, all in favor of that say aye. Aye. Opposed? That's been approved. Motion to approve the re revised investment policy. We used to have one, and this one is revised now, so. I did, uh, the one that went in the packet, I had to modify it. Um, the original one had $500,000. That amount actually can be up to 650000 between FDIC insurance and the state guaranteed insurance. So um, Elaine actually has been investing 650000 in CDs. So this one that was sitting at your spot reflects the 650000 All the other changes were, there is nothing else other than that amount. From what was in your packet. Okay. You need a motion on that? Let's see. Revised investment. Pushed by Mrs. Krentz. Second by Donna Clotta. Any discussion on that? Being not all in favor of that, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Oh, that's been approved. Motion to approve the total cost for the radio communication project. What we're trying to do is get this bond together tonight so we can vote on it. Get a motion on that. I guess just for clarification, so the back in November, December, you, you approved the Motorola contract, correct? Correct. So you're talking about the, um, the Plainfield Tower switchover, the highway work at the tower sites, and the towers. Yes, and the switchover was approved as part of the purchase of the Okay, property. so then you're just really down to those two items, the towers, $946,800, and the highway work, which is anticipated to cost $48,000. So that's what you're down to. Otherwise, you've approved everything else prior. That is part of that number, yeah. There's a motion to include that in the bond. Make a motion to approve the total cost of the radio communication. Okay, we got a motion by Mike Lakeman. Do we have a second by Larry Crawford? Any discussion? Hearing not all in favor. I just want to say how bizarre I think this is that, you know, w when we wanted to build a kitchen for aging, you know, we came and I, I know we made this deal to, to earn the money for it, to spend $300,000 on a kitchen. And yet we just turn around and plop this 
a million three hundred and ninety thousand to remodel the work release center and that's all I know, but we're not voting on that yet. No. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll <laughs> save hold that. I'll thought. save that. <laughs> okay. Any more discussion, Larry? What is the extent of the highway work that needs to be done? Any other discussion? All sides of this one thing. It's two towers that we're putting up. Any more discussion? Okay, all in favor of that, say aye. 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 Opposed, that's been approved. Now, the remodeling work release center to use as office space, seeing it's empty down there. And the uh, Old County Normal School needs a lot of repairs. This one here would just need remodeling and why we brought it up at this time to include it in the bond. Motion to approve. Motion by Donna Clotter to approve. Any second? Second to the motion. No, we got to have a second. Got to have a second. Otherwise, the building, otherwise, uh, Work release center will sit there as it is at this time. Second. Second by Bill Dye. Now, discussion on it. I have a question. Um, sure. The, the, the um, point was raised by, by the sheriff about using a portion of this uh, for juvenile intake. Uh, is that included, or would that, be, would that be included in the proposed remodeling of the uh, work release center? That's yes. my first concern. Second is. Um, I sure hate to see that uh, old county normal school torn down. It's a landmark, but I can understand where it has to be done because of so many repairs and all that sort of thing. Is there anyone in there? Uh, yeah, I did go to school there. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> way back in, graduated way back in 1964. Uh, and I hate to see it go, but I can understand where it, uh, where there's the need for it to go. A lot of people, my mother even went to school there, so. We, don't know yet. I don't think we have the exact. Well, I think there's about 11,000 square feet in the south annex, or no, 8,000 square feet in the south annex. There's about 11,000 square feet downstairs. So, um, you know, it's you got to make allowances for hallways and things like that. But you know, basically, they would be able to f fit that entire office staff downstairs. So you're save you're going to save energy costs. Is Even is. Well, no, that's going to be gone. Uh, even the, that we want to use. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a room. I mean, that's a room. There, that's, it's a room. Yeah, yeah, it's not. There would be there would be a juvenile intake situation sure. here then. Sure. But it's not it's not a it's not this it's not it's a not jail. I understand that, but okay. they have to have a place to process them away from the general um, population. And I noticed too there would be a holding room for the bailiff's office and so on for um, prisoners waiting to go to court. Go to court, wherever it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's in yeah, the back there. Just thinking about it. <laughs> what it costs. A lot cheaper than building another building. Oh, definitely. You know, the heating is here, the electricity is here, the water is here, everything is here. And hopefully that that uh, demolition of that building would alleviate some of the parking problems on, uh, is it Elm Street that runs along there? Because that's a dangerous intersection when you're coming up uh, from the, that side of the jail to that corner because you can't see to the west at all. Yes, I've got a couple of questions on about the demolition, if it's going to be bid out to local contractors. I've had two of them called me already. want to know if it's going to be bid out or if it's just going to be given to the highway. The demolition, we, we got a price from the highway. Right, but I, 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 my contractors asked me, are, are they bidding that out? Do we have a chance at it? I believe that we will be looking at bidding it out. We just took it for an estimate. And, and I, I, agree, I understand that, but, but they asked me, and I'm, I'm trying to get the answer if it will be bid. We're going to talk to either the Manhattan owner and the assessor's inspector mm -hmm. to talk to and see how much discussion is going on. I Are 
we capping this at 1.39 mil? That includes taking down the Yes, how did you, you come up with that amount, the one million three hundred ninety thousand? To uh, did you have somebody professional come yes, in and look at that? You did. Okay. I just was. You had a question? I was more of a comment. I, I was just surprised at how quickly this came up. Uh, you know, in our last meeting, it seemed like we were, somebody asked what, what kind of that space is going to be used for. <coughs> and uh, the response was we were going to wait and see what the state was going to do in, in the, for, for future uh, prison usage. And, uh, and all of a sudden, we already have an architect hired to uh, uh, do some work, uh, work on it. Um, how was the architect being paid and who authorized it and that he type of thing? He uh, actually did it gratis. Because he is doing the kitchen project also and then he gave us that so we were, at least we're getting started. And the reason I, don't I, think, I didn't think we had any mu money budgeted for it or anything. That's, and, and the reason this came up so quick also is we're going for bonding now. If we're going to do it, let's get it included in the bond. How much money is the county able to bond? Lots. <laughs> it's a big number. We, we have no debt right now, so I mean, it, it's a fairly large. We're not even going to come close with the number that is coming before you tonight. So it's. Sorry, John Dave. Okay, any other discussion? The modeling work will be centered uses office space included in the bond. We, we got a motion to second on it. All in favor of that say aye. 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 Opposed? That's been approved. South Annex demolition and parking lot paving. That's the next one. That's the one for what, 85,000? <coughs> that was an estimate from the highway department. I'll make a motion to approve the so South Annex demolition and parking lot. I reluctantly second it. <laughs> <laughs> Any more discussion on that? Hearing none, all in favor of that say aye. Aye. Opposed? That's been approved. Now we've got consideration and possibly action on the following resolutions. Res resolution 170511, uh, gosh, 170511, resolution authorizing application for ERM grant. <coughs> <coughs> Motion by Joe Piaski. We have a second. I, I want you to go to the resolution number 170511. A and Ruth is going to explain the differences. Okay. We have a new copy on our desk. So. We, we've got a uh, motion by Joe and a second by Larry Crawford on it. So go ahead, Ruth. Okay. Um, the original resolution that was sent out in your packet had been approved um, by the Land Conservation um, and Water Education Committee, and it had been previously approved by the state agency where we're going to be submitting the grant after they approved it and it got into your packet. They contacted us and said, we need you to change some wording in it um, to make you more eligible for the grant. And so the amended resolution is those changes. It doesn't change the substance of it. Basically, what it says is that the old resolution had indicated that you were authorizing the um, LEW, LWE committee to submit an application. And now you're saying you're allowing the chair to sign and submit the application. Now, I don't know why they would think that we are submitting an unsigned application, but they wanted all of the language that was changed from um, submit assigned to sign and submit. And so basically, that's the changes in the amended resolution. And so in order to get this going through, we're asking that you approve the amended version tonight. 
Okay, any discussion on it? On it, Larry Crawford. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's been approved. Resolution authorizing reorganization of the EMS department. Motion. I'll move Motion to accept it, uh, the reorganization uh, as presented on uh, Resolution 1805-11. By Dennis Wendy, second by Bill Downey. Any discussion on it? Bring none. All in favor of that, say aye. Aye. Opposed? That's been approved. Resolution 19511, resolution authorizing the borrowing of not to exceed $7,250,000 and providing for the issuance and sale of general obligation promissory notes, therefore. Okay, we need a motion. none of you want to do this but you've approved all of these projects so <laughs> this is just a this is just a and way we to have in our like this year we have money laid aside to pay on it and if we do that every year as it goes along going to be paid off and the interest rate is really down there now we can borrow yeah this is the this is one of the first steps when the sale is actually issued it comes back to you again and you actually accept the term so um, this is the first step so. Okay, do we have a second on that? I'll second that. Second by, second by Mike Lightness. Any discussion on it? This is roll call vote. Yes, Larry. How do we intend to repay it? Is it a certain amount per year or, or yes. how many years? Yes, um, well, the last time we bonded, um, we paid it off in 10 years with the ability to call it back in five. So I guess depending on how the market goes, you know, we would hope 10 years at the most, I, I'm anticipating, because we have a lot of equipment in this and you don't want your <coughs> a debt management plan that you just adopted, you don't want your bond to last longer than the value or the equipment lasts. So. You're talking about a repayment of about seven and a half million, so seven hundred fifty thousand a year, approximately. Okay. Was there any other questions, Donna? I just want you all to remember what I said when it was the wrong time to say it. But you know, the Commission on Aging is building the kitchen. We're paying. We're paying back, or we're borrowing the money from the county and. The commission is paying it back, and that was the deal we made, and I understand it, but now we're, we've added so much to this that wasn't in the beginning phases. I mean, we've added an, another million and a half dollars for the work release center, and so I just want you to know I'm a little irritated <laughs> that we couldn't put it in with the bond. Any other discussion on it? This will be a roll call vote. Yes. 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 Mrs. Swanner. I'm voting half yes and half no. I'll say yes. Mr. White. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Lightness. Yes. Okay, that passed. There's one no. Now we've got some appointments. Transportation Coordinating Committee, Fred Gallerup, Sylvia Munson, uh, Karen West, and Joanne Weisner. I would move to approve the appointments as presented. Second by Mrs. Prince. All in favor of that say aye. Aye. Opposed? That's been approved. We've got designation of June 15, 2011 as Elder Abuse Awareness Day and Designating May 15th to 21st, 2011, Emergency Medical Services Week. We have a motion. Motion by Donna Collada. Second by Kirshner. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of that say aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Next year, uh, next month, we're gonna have an appointment of a new supervisor, Fred Grarup, is gonna replace Mr. Likeness. Mr. Likeness is resigning as of the next meeting. He will fill in what he can at the meantime. And uh, just so it's, you're aware of it. So Fred Gallerup will fulfill his term. Bill. Mr. Chairman, in view of the fact that for all that money, I ought to do all that work. So I'll make that motion. Okay. Well, wait a second. We've got a motion. By no, wait, wait. <laughs> I am. Go down and yes. second by down the closet. No, she's adjourn. got something she wants to say. Yes, I, I want to <laughs> make sure that all the county board supervisors um, look at this memo from the Parks and Solid Waste. It was in, in our packet, not in our packets, but it was in the mail slot. And I know there's been some concern about closing the, the site on the sites on Sunday, but please read and the committee is the one that made the decision, not um, Scott Schumann. And increasing costs have made it almost impossible to keep the landfills open. In 2007, our cost per ton with Valley Trail Landfill was 2210, and now it's up to 3412. And, and just read all of this and say this is why it had to be closed on Sunday. Um, it wasn't anything that was done lightly, but it had to be done. So please read your memo and. Uh, you know, when you're talking to your constituent, constituents, you'll have the information. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. We need a second too. The second was by Donna Clotta. Okay. First was by Bill Downey. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, we're adjourned. <coughs> <coughs> I knew that. to uh, uh, prove it exactly. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen 11.